All right, guys, so we got Alcatraz 2.0 out of the trailer. We are about to throw it up on jack stands real quick. Got a couple different camera angles out here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, attempt to try to get the intake off and uh, get started on this whole, uh, I guess, rebuild, you wanna say. Uh, gonna go ahead and tear it apart. Hopefully we ain't got too big of damages. Dad's about to back the rig up, because we do have to hook it back up to the power and the pole born. So we ain't out here just running the generator nonstop. But uh, we're gonna get everything ready for y'all. All right, guys, so a lot of y'all have been asking about getting my dad on the channel more, and uh, he's actually starting to be more active with it, which is uh, makes it easier for me, makes everything a lot better, and uh, hopefully he can teach y'all something as he has taught me a lot throughout the years. Uh, basically, what he was saying is, in like a little smaller version, is this thing jump timing. Whenever it left, it popped. And uh, I know people are going to make fun of me for that. All right, guys, so we finally figured out what the issue was with the big cubic inch motor why i did a big nitrous backfire uh in south georgia motorsports park we got it up on the jack we're gonna start tearing apart tonight but it's like 47 degrees here so we're not gonna mess with the night we'll come back out in the morning and start playing with this thing but uh i'm gonna go ahead and let my dad explain to y'all what exactly happened how we caught it and what we're gonna try to do to prevent it from happening ever again go ahead well i'm not a hundred percent on what happened to it but i think this is what happened to it you know i wanted to before we pulled the motor out i wanted to go ahead and uh check the rotor phase that's about the only thing we can check we checked the crank trigger at the track um you know other than checking the ignition the cdi box which we was going to send back and send the wiring harness back and have it checked here's one of the things we could check out so when these motors are put together you know you got a crank trigger phase you set the crank trigger at whatever you set them at you know some guys set them differently we got a cam sensor phase that we set in my stuff might be a little bit different than the next engine guys uh, and then you got a rotor phase that you got to phase in so on mine there's a black line on top of here you look right here i put a black line on top of that which is outside the distributor that's really just reference for me for when i'm putting the engine together so when i go to phase this thing in and i, I roll this motor over and let's just say i run this motor down on seven degrees most of the time when everything's all on it's got seven degrees of engine timing so I'm going to phase this rotor in at seven degrees. So it's pointing right at number seven when he's running down the track. Because basically everything in this motor is all turned on in about one second. So even the rotor phase that'll be a little bit off as it's pulling the timing out, it, nothing can happen inside one second. Although this thing ain't shit at a quarter second. So, but we've got a lot of runs on this motor. You know, we've had this motor for two and a half years. Um, we've never even burned a strap on the spark plug on this engine. This has been a very good motor. Um, I bought this motor from Pat two and a half years ago. Um, Pat's never even seen this engine. Since I bought it from him, Pat's never seen it. The only thing he's seen on this motor is I took the block up to him one time and I went and had to go put a stone hone in the cylinders. You know, we hand hone them, which is all fine and good. But one thing about the hand hone, you never know how much material you're taking out of the sleeves. 
because um, you got no way to gauge it. And not, not only that, the, the, the cylinders won't be square. So after you run these motors so hard, the cylinders get out of round, they get out of square. So I did take it up to Pat and he went ahead and put a stone inside it. He honed it for me and uh, we got it all squared back up. But that's the only time Pat's seen this motor in two and a half years, because it's been a great engine. You know, we service the motor, Justin services the engine. We freshen it up, we put the parts back in it. You know, we take care of the engine ourselves. We try to save as much money as we can. We do as much as we can on our own. But getting back to what we got going on. So when this motor is all put together, you know, the cam's back in time, the crank trigger's in time, the cam sensor's in time. The last part that you're gonna do is you're gonna put the rotor phase in. So I put this little mark on the outside. This is my number one spark plug. If I had the cap back on top here and you screw it in, number one will be setting right here. So this motor right now is setting at number seven. Two things are going on here. This shouldn't be doing this. This is all bad. Whatever we got going on behind this thing, this is no good. So, you know, that thing's probably flipping back and forth, you know, probably five, six degrees right now, just floating in there. So that's bad. Something behind that's going on. But number two is, even if I touch the tension and the clock rotation, the engine's going. So right now it's tight. It's more firing on number eight right now than it is firing on number one. That's basically what happened. Um, you know, so at this point, I won't send the ECU back. I won't send the CDI box. I won't send the harness back. You know, I won't do anything at this point because I'm confident that I'm 99% sure that this is what caused the problem. So this cylinder, what's happening is when he left, for whatever reason, the run before it didn't do it. It just happened when it happened when he made that second run. So something jumped, this, this move jumped time and like I said, it was more firing on number eight. So in that run, it was just firing on wrong cylinders. That's a problem. The motor has a firing order. It's got to go through. Uh, so when it's not hitting on its firing order, the cam is in time with the crank. And when it's not hitting on its firing order and hitting these cylinders on time, it's basically firing on different cylinders. So when it's firing on different cylinders, it's all bad, especially in a motor this size. That's what really hurt the motor. That's what hurt the motor so bad um, is it basically was just firing on different cylinders. So. We get this part right here tore apart. We'll find out what's going on behind here. But I also, I also believe that the um, I also believe the belt jumped the tooth back here too, because it looks like it's you know it, it might be even a couple teeth off. You know this if you can look in here, you probably can't see this belt. Now I'm not talking about the cam belt. That's the other thing that I'm going to change to make sure the camshaft didn't jump time. But I don't believe the cam jump time. And the reason why I say that is I brought the motor up on top dead center at zero and the intake valve and the exhaust valve to me are closed they're loose i rocked them so that's not a hundred percent i you know i don't know by just being a tooth off on the cam how much degrees that is but the the best indicator is when you bring it up on number one your intake and your exhaust are closed it's on number one firing position so i really don't believe the cam jump time but i still need to check that i think really 99 99 percent of the problem is going to be inside this msd distributor something backed off in here I was in this distributor probably about a little over a year ago, um, just tightened everything up, replaced everything, but, and I Loctite all this kind of stuff out. I always put Loctite on it, but something has definitely backed off. This is all bad right here. I do remember when we was in Georgia, I did grab, we took this off and look, and I grabbed it and I rolled it and I knew that wasn't right. So I just knew before we tore the motor out, we was gonna go ahead and check it. But like I said, I believe that this little belt in here, if you, I think he showed the belt, I think that thing's probably jumped a couple teeth because it's way past number one. Um, you know, that's just where it's at. You know, we just got to tear it apart and see what kind of damage we got. We'll fix the damage. Good thing about these motors, they're all billet. Um, man, you can, I've done a lot of damage to some of these motors. We've kicked the rods off them. I really don't think there's any, there's not anything that can't be fixed on them. You know, as long as you got the, the money, it can all be fixed. So. I mean, we, 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 we slung rods out of motor. We bent the heads. They had to shave the heads down, weld them back up. We tore the top of the decks up. I mean, we windowed the sides of these things. Th these guys at Pat Musi, at Rare Morrison, uh, Fulton, uh, Charlie Buck, any of those big time engine builders, on these billet motors, I really don't think there's nothing they can't fix. I mean, they, I, I believe you can split the block in half and they can still weld it back together because it's billet. So, but we'll get the motor out of the car. And we'll go ahead and get it serviced and taken care of. I'm sure it's got a, a, a lot of damage inside there, but like I said, we're just gonna have to fix it up. It's gonna have some sleeves damage, probably gonna have a little block damage, probably gonna have some cylinder head damage. Yeah, so in, after that, you know, this is basically gonna be his backup motor. Um, we have another motor and we wanted to make sure we didn't want that to happen to the other motor. That's why we didn't put the motor in this car because we didn't know what happened. I need to know what happened. So we decided to pack up, lick our wounds, go home from Georgia. But 
The, the Street Outlaw no prep car has basically the same engine in it. Never know with Justin and I, one of these things is a thousand cubic inch, one of them's 959. I don't know what he's got. He's flipping them back and forth. He'll never tell me. So I don't write down which one's which. We just got parts in them. So at the end of the day though, this, this motor right here will be his backup motor. We're just gonna rotate the motors out and just try and keep them healthy. You know, you run them 15, 20 runs, we're gonna flip, put another motor in the car and then we'll freshen this motor back up. Try to run a full series of the Street Outlaw no prep. It's gonna be a little tough, it's a tough schedule, but you know, I think we got, you know, two motors, three transmissions, four converters, four center sections and one car. We can keep the one car off the wall and Justin don't crash the car, we'll be okay. And if we have any more engine failures, if Justin will just Lift on the throttle, we probably won't have near this much damage. We get through that, we'll be all right. All right guys, so a lot of y'all have been asking about getting my dad on the channel more and uh, he's actually starting to be more active with it, which is uh, makes it easier for me, makes everything a lot better. And uh, hopefully he can teach y'all something as he has taught me a lot throughout the years. Uh, basically what he was saying is in like a little smaller version is this thing jump timing whenever it left it popped and uh i know people are gonna make fun of me for that da -da 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 -da. so uh actually uh it just went out there it jumped timing it was firing off of different cylinders if i could do it all over again i should have got out of throttle uh but there's a lot of things going on and within that 1.7 1.8 seconds it completely grenaded the motor flames and uh, the fire had so much heat inside the car that uh, it basically torched the firewall. And uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to get out here. We're going to start tearing it apart, getting everything ready. So we can go ahead and get everything disassembled, cleaned up, and then figure out what we got to do to be able to get it fixed so we can get ready for Street Outlaw No Prep King Season 4. This will be our backup motor. We do have a motor that's inside the car right now. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me what cubic inch is it. It changes every week. Uh, we have different cranks, we have different cams, different pistons, different rod lengths. We just figure out which one we want to go with, what's better, different air, and all that out there. So uh, we're getting everything ready. It sucks that it happened, but it did happen. It is what it is. We'll go ahead and uh, get it fixed. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel. Keep up with this process. I'm going to do this like a little mini episode deal. We're going to uh, take it step by step on how to tear one of these big cubic inch motors out and uh, take everything out, clean it up, assemble it again, get ready so we can get ready to fire it back up. Hopefully, I'm praying that the damage is not too big uh, inside this engine. We're already estimating it's probably going to be between 25 and 30 grand to just fix it because we've been down this road before um, and it sucks that it happened that way over a $20 uh, belt. Basically jump timing and that's what grenaded this motor. Really